Hi there, and welcome to Rare Synth episode number 19 and Sonic Synthesizers. I have to admit, I have a love hate relationship with them. The last 10 years, I worked on six of them, and of these, only two I got fully working again, including the EPS 16 Plus I will repair in this episode. The problems with the ones I did not fix were mostly hard to diagnose. Intermittent issues, unclear which IC is kaput, and they always took a lot of time to work on. So, like I had a VFX SD which didn't work at all, or a KT-76 which seemed to be working but no sound and I could not find the culprit. And another VFX SD which I got working again after finding a shorted capacitor on the display board, but it had a broken effect chip and other IC problems which I could not diagnose back then. And then finally success with an EPS sampler, the classic version, which needed a power supply repair, some new tactile switches and I replaced the floppy drive with a GoTech floppy disk emulator. And then I had an SQ2 with a broken keyboard scanner RC, but everything else working. And uh, you can have a look at Rylet Synth episode number 18 for more details on that one. And in this episode, I will deal with an EPS 16 Plus from a colleague of mine, which I offered him to have a look at. What's wrong with it? Just generally hard to reproduce instability issues, like sometimes go into error 33 after booting. Oh, I just love these kinds of problems to work on or an error 32 after booting, or some weird characters appearing on the display, or a keyboard calibration failing. You know, the easy ones to fix. Anyways, I did finally succeed, I think. Did I say think? Y yes, I think all instability issues are gone for now, but long-term use must show if this is really the case. So, without further ado, let's go into the several issues and what the causes are and how they can be fixed. Whoa, I almost forgot. Of course, there's a moment of zen coming away.
I need to clean the connectors inside as a last resort to see how it behaves after a cold startup. So let's go.
yes, I think I fixed it. Over the last week I tried a couple of cold starts and I did not see any startup errors anymore. So it looks stable. Um, so to summarize, I think the socket of the ESP made a bad contact and this caused the ESP sometimes to trip after a cold start. This causes these 32 and 33 errors after the startup. Secondly, the weird characters on the screen and the keyboard calibration errors were definitely caused by the bad connector between the two keypad PCBs. And lastly, the power supply. It does get very hot, which is kind of normal I learned. Replacing the caps and regulators did improve the measured voltage though, so it should be okay. I will give it back to my colleague and ask him to monitor its stability over the coming weeks. I will report back if there are any new issues. See ya!